All right, I think we're back. Um, things unbroken. I uh, had to. I don't know if I need to restart my computer, but restarting my computer fixed things, so that worked. Um, and I had to get everything opened up again. All right, yeah, everything just crashed and died and whatever when I ran that, so that's concerning. Um, let's uh, try to have that not happen. Now, what I did find while I was waiting for things to load back up is that I maybe might possibly have a way to use AlexNet with the TensorFlow stuff, which might have better results. Like, because that's what I wanted to do from, like, to begin with, and that's what we were so close to doing before, and that's just not the direction we went down, because I thought, oh, what is happening? Hi, hello. Um, everything died. Uh, <laughs> or I forget exactly what, um, what error we were having, but it, it had to do with, like, allocating too much memory and running out of memory, which... Either is something wrong going in the code, which is very plausible. Also, the fact that we're dealing with memory leaks in Python Omao. Well, we're talking about 60,000 images here. So, yeah. But I mean, well, like, and then I, I don't know the, um, I don't know the size of an AlexNet. I don't even know what an AlexNet properly looks like. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> okay, technically... Well, we're, we're supposed to be only dealing with 10,000 of them right now. But, yeah. And I should also just mention, they're images that are 32 by 32 pixels. So it's not like they're that big. But then they're, they also are RGB. Like, they're not black and white. They have RGB stuff going on. So, yeah. Um, now, what I was... What, I want to maybe look at... I, I want to get a better idea of what an AlexNet actually is. Because maybe that might help. Um, this is what you do... Okay, um, I recognize some of these terms. So you do expect to start with a 224 by 224 image, which is strange. Not strange, but yeah, that will definitely crash. Yeah, so I, I, I um, need to figure out how to not do that. <laughs> um, but I don't even know if that was the issue because we've been dealing with this before. Let me, um, I don't want to run this again immediately because it'll likely, whatever happened will happen again. <laughs> so let me, f let me just go back on something. I want to just do a thing. Um, this, yeah, all the lines. I want to copy some code from down here. Some things that we started with. Where are you? I'm looking for something specific. Where? Oh, where? No, you're down here. Basically, the code we almost ended off with yesterday. Um, well, or like when we when we switched from doing TensorFlow, or more specifically Keras, to um, PyTorch. Okay, there's something in these. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, that, the this they did the reshaping thing. Yeah, and then I took this. And then this, and this, and this. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna copy and paste. I still have like the untouched version of this. Okay. So at one point we had this. I swear there was more above, but maybe not. Uh, this wasn't a thing. That That's not a thing. Um, predictions. Blah, 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 blah. I just run this. This will not crash anything, correct? Uh, I don't know if I brought up enough. Uh, in a minute. In a minute. Any day now. <laughs> right, no, right. The first time I, I, I run this, it has to like re import everything. Um, so while it's doing that, I don't know, can take a look at this procedural animation. Wow, fancy. <laughs> um, oh no, okay, oh, yeah. I put it under the I grabbed the right thing, didn't I? 
Did I? No, no, I didn't. Uh, you are supposed to use the other one. I meant to grab this one. The data is also not normalized anymore. I gotta do that. I'll bring that back. I have reasons of why I'm doing this because it might be, might be going back to an old idea of how we were attempting to do this. Um, I think I can just go this equals this divided by 55 or something like that. Like whatever I had here before, which I think was similar to this. Cause I, I think it'll basically apply this to every element in the array. It is, okay. Cool. So I feel like I'm missing something cause this feels too short, but let me just run this again anyways. So this does what I'm expecting it to do. Mm. Expected shape, none, that, found shape, blah. Do I not reshape it in this situation? Maybe I don't. Oh yeah, no, I think I don't because I need it to be flat for what I'm passing it into. You just ended, you weren't supposed to end. You never ran, unless that was a step that I'm missing. Oh, I am, no, oh, where's the, where's the, the line about the epochs? That, that, that is what, another thing I'm missing. Uh, do I have it in here somewhere? It's this, this, the, the way of how I actually run the model. Okay, where was that line? Did I delete it? No, <laughs> no, I think I did. Uh, come on, where are you? I, I can go do more Google searching to find what, like, I, I did it before, I could do it again, but, ah, no, it's there, there it is, this, this is what I was looking for. Well, not entirely, but close. This, but on this model, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, the second, I'm not, I, oh, let me bring back the music. Sure. Right. What? Wait, no, this... Oh, not this again. Ah, uh, um, I'm tempted to, like, almost, like, pull up my VOD from yesterday. Oh, we're dropping some frames. Seems to be fine. <laughs> and see what code I had here before. Um, this is why you have version control. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's, it's fine. Okay, so... Oh, this is a problem we spent a while trying to fix, I think where it so it says it like it can't find an adapter to handle input class ND array but th that wasn't what the issue was like it, it wasn't an issue of converting it from this to this because we did a thing where we imported data a different way and then it did work i should remember what i did uh where it still w was at the end of the day an ND array um mp array nd well or whatever numpy array Oh, what was it? What did I do? What did we do before? Do I have what I did before down here? Of all the things that I haven't deleted, that's just a big mess. Maybe. Oh no, it was the training data that was part of the problem, wasn't it? Um, I think I remember now. I had to go and do this. Right, I think that was the revolution, is that this actually wasn't the problem, this was the problem the whole time, or something like that. Um, yeah. Something that wasn't an NP array that needed to be an MP array, or I think more specifically, it's just these need to be the same data type. There we go, okay. That, back to kind of what we were before. So, so what, what this was, is where I, this was where I built a model separately, um, or like, ma sorry, manually, instead of using the Alex net thing. And then this is training it. It's doing the training that then I could evaluate and all that um, with the te test data. Um, no, the problem, no, no the, the thing here is this is training with 10,000 images. It's doing this without crashing my computer. So testing with 10,000 images, one would think 
would be fine. So this is like, can maybe rule out that like, the reason that it wasn't working with the thing I was just doing is because, well, I, there's just some weirdness with PyTorch versus TensorFlow or Keras. Um, yeah, so what would be great is if we could swap this out and continue doing this through Keras and TensorFlow, but get an AlexNet into this instead of PyTorch. Seems like it would be more promising. Also, this is way less lines of code than the stuff we had before, and no for loops going through all the images. It was just working a lot better. But the only reason I didn't continue with this is because of the Alex network stuff. Um, however, before I even do that, I do want to make one, I, I do want to do one test on this, that'll at least be something new and different, is that um, this is training this model. I want this to actually, I, I want to do the, the next step that would be uh, evaluate the model uh, with the training data. Um, so I just want to, let's see if um, the AI can help me here. Um, if I, if I put something like, evaluate the model, sometimes this helps. Um, oh, I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, and this will give me the test loss test accuracy. Oh, that's actually, that's helpful information. Um, and print both of them. I mean, actually, like, yeah, okay. Uh, then I'll print the loss. Yeah, okay. Um... I, I, for, I, I recognize the term verbose. I forget what that does, and I want to know. Um, so. Oh, no, that's a thing. Oh, no, doesn't um, verbose have to do with, like, printing stuff as it's going through? Yeah, okay. Show you nothing. One will show an animated thing like this. Two will show you a number of epochs like this. Oh, okay, haha. -ha. See? I well, vaguely remembered. I'm going to put that on one, then. So it's based, that's just an enum. Um, so I'm actually gonna stop this. Uh, just control C it, yeah. Also close that. Um, so I don't actually wanna wait for this to go to 100 epochs, so let's just go 10. I, I'm gonna call it generations, 100 generations. That's the term I'm more used to seeing. So let's just see if this works, right? While this is running, um, and we'll, we'll see if this even works with without errors, um, and then we'll see how long this takes. Now, just a warning: if this is the problem, when this actually starts to run, this my co my computer could all crash the same way it did before. Let's hope that doesn't happen. And if it starts to, then I'll maybe try to just like cancel the program. Um, so, warning in the next few seconds. Let's see what happens. At yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or it could be instant. I'll take that. Okay. Never mind then. Um, don't you have access to some... Uh, don't you have access to some uh, bigger computational resources for this sort of situation? No. Unless, like, there's some publicly available, like, cloud wood services, whatever. I know that some of that stuff does exist, like the way that render farms are a thing. Um, but I don't know if I need such things. I mean, maybe I could look into that kind of stuff. That's just going to complicate the whole process even more. We'll see. We'll, we'll, get, th we'll get there. Um, there's a lot of free student programs and such. Oh, directly with my class? No, nothing. Like, nothing that I've been like, oh, you should um, be looking into one day? Ah, uh, sure, maybe. Like, if I'm doing stuff that's more like actual personal projects, sure, I'll go the full mile with all that stuff. With little school assignment that I have to get done in like three days, I don't have the time. <laughs> I mean, obviously that stuff could speed up the time things take to run, I get that, but there's setup time and bug figuring out time. <laughs> Anyways, for now, though, this seems to be fine. The fact that this just ran really fast is fine for the purposes of what I'm trying to sort out. Now, I see this 313 out of 313. Is that... That it's not actually... For each test, it's not actually using... Okay, so that might... That's interesting. I think the way that this works is that it's not actually using all 10,000 images for each generation it goes through. I think it randomly picks some of them which seems to be 313. I don't know where that's coming from. 
I'm fine with that. If it's like, yeah, here's here's the 10,000, just take like a few of them. I mean, it makes it run faster, sure. If it is testing on the whole 10,000, it's maybe a problem. I like if I could scale this number. So like while I'm testing it, I go with a smaller number. And then once it's in its like final state, then I go with a big number. But even then I don't like it. Yeah, um, I care more about, yeah, my computer not crashing. <laughs> Anyways, um, I, there's even the thing, th there's actually the thing where at the end of this assignment, I'm just submitting the code. I'm not submitting, well, there's a small writing component, but I don't actually care about like, like these numbers don't matter beyond writing stuff about what they mean and stuff. So if I, in theory, got to a point where I knew the code was good and I knew it, like this will take a while to run, like I don't have the resources to make this run, but I knew it was going to work without failing, then I could submit that in theory. Obviously it would be a you know great to do if like, I don't actually know if it's going to run successfully, but in theory if I, you know, I'm having it run with a lower count, not the whole 10,000, and then it's like, okay, it works, and then I submit it where it is bumped up to 10,000, in theory that would be fine. Anyways, though, but, uh, but, um, that's not the problem. The problem, oh, yeah. Problem is more with, um, the problem still comes from the AlexNet thing. Because actually, I'm not even training this model. Uh, this is the thing that I did before that I realized that I wasn't necessarily supposed to do it this way. Um, I'm not supposed to be, like, training a model like this, or at least that's not like different parts of my assignment but the, the part we're working on we're focusing on right now is i'm using a pre-trained model for this situation making that go and do the things um basically this evaluation and then then it's supposed to work and i, I, I don't know anyways um so for, actually first thing that i want to just figure out is, is i want to know where this 313 comes from if i can See if I have any rain over scaling what that is. So, and it was the same on both. It might be automatically calculated over, um, wait, I don't know if it scales on the number of generations. If I go like five, does that influence it? Because I think that's something that's being calculated behind the scenes that I might be able to manually override. No, it's still the same. Okay. Um, so... So I'll leave that at 10 for now. Um, I don't even know what I'd search. I'm, I'm trying to think of like what would I search to find out this. Um, so let's go Python cross model fit. Let me just search that and um, see if I can find anything helpful. Puts outputs, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, see, see, I feel like this 313 is specific to my, like, n my, my data size, but let me just maybe Google the 313 and see if, like, <laughs> um, I don't know, anyone else has rent any specific issue, or any, any similar issues, or I see the number from somewhere. Um, what am I looking at? Or oh, TensorFlow stuff. Yes. Yeah, I, I get how some of this could be doing. Interference, yeah. Uh -huh. You are using the whole 750. I think this starting with 750. Batch size is a thing. So I do have more options that I can pass in here that do things. Hmm. You have a 313. What, where, where does 313 come from? Why 313? But also, why do you not have 313? Why, why, how do you have 750 uh, there? I need to look at more of the inputs with this. I, I think it, it might have to do with this batch size and this validation split. Um, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. It's 32. Why is it 32? It's not going off of, like, the input size. I see this is something with 32. But my input size is uh, 10,000. 10,000 by 32 by 32 by 3. So, like, I, I don't... 32 times 3 is that? No, I, like, where is 313 coming from? 
Is 313 a prime number? Can it divide by 3? No. Um, so it doesn't seem the result of just multiplying stuff together. M my guess is that it's like a percentage thing that's just rounded. Because like taking the 100,000 inputs divide like and then like as some percentage would be my guess of where that might be coming from somehow. But I'm still not entirely sure. Um... Or may it's something in, in this as well, this atom optimizer. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Just use fit as usual. Sequels, yeah, mp.random.random. But now I'm passing in the whole input and output thing. Let me double check th that I am. Um, at this point, if I print, bleh, if I can type this whole thing, um, just x train dot shape followed by y train dot shape. Um, double check that they are what I think they are, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Hmm. Just trying to think of what calculation is going into that 313. That's what I'm trying to sort out right now. Um, like, divide by 3072. Um, hmm. I don't know. Uh, but, but not just figuring out the calculation going into it, but also how do I change it? How do I override you and make you different? So the number of generations isn't influencing it um i s hmm. um yeah i do have my own loss function see i don't even know the terminology of what this number is called this would be easier if i knew what that number was called as like a, a term, which I don't. Um. Or if I can, again, yeah, see more of what options I have into model.fit. Okay, so you have an X, a Y, a batch size. Oh, yes, explanations, thank you. Um, the number of samples per gradient update. Okay, if unspecified, it'll default to 32. Do not specify batch size if your data is in the form of data sets, generators, or sequence instances. Okay, so this might be something I can override where it says the default 32, even though it's, I don't know what's happening there. Let me see if this though is something I can, um, override so batch size if i put it here so well batch size i can great if you actually showed up but um oh no your batch underscore size and well space equals let's just try like 74 it's just like a number that i can see will maybe show up <laughs> uh if i can see a 74 show up that i know that like hey it's working it changed. Okay. I mean, it didn't change to what I wanted it to change to, but it changed in general, which is interesting. What if I try a thousand? Like, this isn't the batch side. Oh, now you're ten. How? Are you, like... Is it, like, 3072 divided by 32? No. Um, divided by three? This, that wouldn't be really... This is two divided by... Or like... 10,000 divided by... 32? There it is! I got it! I got the calculation! And, okay, it's it's 312.5 at rounds. Okay. I get it. I understand now. Okay, so I want the batch size to be one. Um... So the, the number, it said the default was 32. Yeah, the default batch size is 32, so then it takes the number of samples 
that I have. So the number of images I'm passing in, that's the 10,000. It divides it by the batch size, and then that gets the, that thing there. So one should then test all 10,000 images on every step. Please don't crash my computer. Okay, fair enough. So now this would take a lot longer to run, which makes sense. Um, Cause it's also doing that for every generation. But now I know what controls that. Good, useful to know. Um, which then means, which I'm fine leaving it being lower for now, but this would be the thing that I could change is that while I'm doing the testing, I let it be a lower number. And then once I'm like finalized, then I replace it with the high number or lower batch size. So higher, whatever that number is called. So this is doing the whole 10,000 or more importantly, it's on this evaluate that I'm going to assume has the same batch size variable. Yeah. Uh, so let me put in 32 as that's what it said the default was. And I have control over this now. If I want it to be even lower, I can put a hundred, um, which will make it run faster at the expense of not being as, um, trained, but I don't care about that right now. I, wanted to see that the code works conceptually like that if i imagine that i rose the number then it would work better um so let's see this do okay fascinating okay so now it oh it's running fast so it actually is running it, it is testing on all ten thousand images without crashing my computer okay that's kind of what i wanted to to verify it's capable of it um uh, with this model maybe so so, so the 10,000 images alone isn't the problem. And also for how this currently just did its training, it, um, it classified the image correctly 40% of the time. So less than half like correct, but that's okay. Cause in theory, it's if I lowered this number and raised this number, that would go uh, a lot higher. And I, when I was experimenting this before, I got it up to like 70% or 70 something, which with, with the promise of like, it was still going up. If I let it run even more longer, then it would be even better. Um, yeah, so that's that. And that's also not even all of my training data I could be using. Cause I'm just using one of these, these batches. I could test with like all five uh, and, and do stuff with them. I have five different files that are each 10,000 images that I can experiment with. But anyways, so that's interesting. So what I want to do now that seems like a better path going forward, if I can figure this out, is I want to go back to something I was trying to do before, but maybe I can have more success with it, where this Alex network, I want to see if I can basically have that replace this. So this is a network, a neural network that I have defined. And instead of this, I want... I have, to, I, I have to, or I'm supposed to, being told by this assignment, I'm supposed to be, um, instead use this, this AlexNet thing. Well, so there, there's um, an AlexNet that I can then run through this and then train it, but I'm supposed to, there's like a version of it that is pre-trained. So then I don't have to do this training. I can skip straight to the evaluation and in theory it would do great. Um, but it was just being way more trouble that some doing it through PyTorch, if I can try to figure out how to do it through Keras and TensorFlow, that would be great. So I'm going to go back to just searching through, trying to find an AlexNet that I can use with Keras. That seems just way more promising uh, that it's going to work. So um, yeah, that's that's that. And also, so this is, this is a visualization, it's kind of behind my head, of what an AlexNet looks like, it seems. Um, Oh, that's where the, oh, I reckon, I've, I've seen these terms. That's where those come from. Oh, interesting. Um, so, but then the, I, I see that there's modifications I have to make to the input data for this to work. The, the, the main thing is that it seems like the, uh, that the input data needs to be a, two, a 227 by 227 by two by three. So I just have to like scale up the image and then that, that's a, a thing. That is a step, I think. Or, um, okay, no, well, I've seen different versions. This is 224. I don't know what it's supposed to be. I'll hopefully figure out like, but I might have to do some you know, transforming of the data differently than how it currently is. And we'll see how that goes. All right, let's do it. Well, I say let's do it like I have a plan. <laughs> the plan is to Google. So uh, Python cross AlexNet. I'm gonna like do this in two stages. First, I'm just gonna see if I can even find, if I find one that has the whole pre-training thing, great. If I can just find the one that's not trained, that's at least like, I feel like a step 
in the right direction. Maybe. Um, <laughs> also, I'm, what I'm trying, what I don't want to find is code that's like building an AlexNet from scratch because that's not what I'm trying to do. Um, well, that this might be. Like ideally there's some library where I can just import it and then be like, yeah, here we go. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yeah, this is, this is the manual that I was talking about that I am not doing. Or that I'm not supposed to do. Because school assignment and such. Um, but interesting. And I do see that this is way more complicated than what I have, which would make sense for then it taking a lot longer to run, which is why I think that... Well, yeah, it might, might be the AlexNet that is uh, more of the performance hit than, than my thing, but... Okay. Um... Yeah, yeah, but again, this isn't what I'm looking for. This is still code that's doing it manually, and there's no way I can have code this manual and have it be pre-trained. So there's no way that this is going to help me. Um, if I find something like this... Um, that's a lot of things. Hmm. Okay. This is still quite manual, but maybe more. We're going to try this as a step, because at the very least, I will have to. Um, at the very least, I will have to get the data to be form formatted correctly, and this would be a good stepping stone in that direction. And yeah, none of this code I will be keeping, so I'm fine just directly copying it, getting other parts of the code to work, and then finding the better code to replace this with. Um, sound like a plan. Let me also just paste all that down. So I would be replacing that with everything up to here, everything between here and here. So it's this that would, is gonna be getting replaced in, in theory, right? So I'm gonna paste this and then we're gonna actually you know sort this out. Um, but first of all, we're not parsing input like this. So I mean, I don't even need the input, the R parse package. Um, okay. But I gotta figure out just how to properly use this. So you don't take input, why? Or you have, you have defaults, sure. But where do you get your image input? Unless you... Wait, what? Excuse me? Um, unless it... Oh, I guess it makes the input... All oh, right, you can make the model without needing the images. Right, yeah. But to actually call upon it and use it... Okay. Okay, so, so pretending that... Um, what are you doing with this parsed input? Um, you don't, okay, I don't think I need any of this other than this bit. So, okay, I don't even know if I need this. I don't know what this part does, but I won't delete it just yet. Well, not having that bit for sure. Um, okay, so I also don't need as many of the, I'll, I'll keep these for now, but you know, eventually I'd, yeah, if this works, I'd you know, integrate it with what I have above. But uh, anyways, so I said, I said, that's to replace this. So if I have model equals this. Let me try I, I'm not having that for now. This would go into this whole training thing. I don't even know if this is going to be able to extract a prediction like that. Or I don't even know if the loss function works this way. I might need to see an example of how this would be used. But I already, I'm pretty sure this will have a problem um, at this stage because this input isn't what it's supposed to be mainly size wise but let me start by just seeing what happens um 
Import error. Cannot import name batch normal. That's your problem? Not that more import issues. What do you use this for? Um, why do you not seem to want to exist? I, there's, there's no way that I can go pip install um, batch. Why? Hey, that's not what I wanted to. Oh no, that's not what I wanted. Oh uh, uh, no, get me out of here. Uh, no, let me just, uh, we're just gonna kind of make a new terminal and say it's fine. <laughs> I didn't mean to paste that. I thought I copied this, but I guess I did not. There's no way that pip install like this. There's no way that's gonna work. No way. Really? Oh, yeah, I was gonna say. Um, or pip install, or there's also like this pip pre-install. Um, I, I, I don't know if it's gonna have any... Like the idea of doing anything different, I, I, I don't think that's a thing that exists. Um, anything along like this, like or install, like n n no way. Yeah, you're not. I, I don't know what I would need for that. So let me um, instead Google just this. Well, just, let me just go just that and see, like, oh yeah, it's not finding it. Um, what's the exact error? Um, can't import. Could also put Python at the beginning of that, but um, whatever. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Um, about layers? Outdated import. Ah, okay. Or, yeah, I'll copy all of it. Oops. Okay, so just a different import line is needed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, you're, you're, the, you'll be fine if I use TF. Maybe. Or maybe just cross with the way that this is. Ha ha! Um, okay, that's dealt with. Okay, don't crash, please. Haha. <laughs> Allocation of black exceeds 10% of free memory. Oh no. Okay, so it. Um, Interesting, but also with <laughs> sure, uh, but also either way, it didn't yeah, it didn't run because of the shape is wrong, so I still had to make that how it should be. So let me do that first, which this is a step, but then I need to actually make I need to make these images bigger, which I'm has got to be a handy resize thing. Python caress um, that resize image. How to resize that to fit that model. Um, mm hmm. Expand dimensions. Well, uh, uh, no, I already have the by three, so I, I don't need I don't need that part. Um, Yo, know, image dot resize this, and then what I want to resize it to. Okay, I trust. Like that makes sense. I that is that is something I I understand. Um, with some changes, because I believe I'm assuming this is not like a, a a factor thing. This is a what will the size of the final thing be, which I think, judging by down here, needs to be. Um, wait, how do you know, why do you not need, wait, what? How does this not need the 6,000 or 60,000 in here? I'll go with it uh, for now, but I don't know why, why the, that shouldn't be, well, well, we'll see. Let's just see what happens. Um. I'd like to just change the names. 
and then do the same thing. I hate it. Oh, I am still normalizing the data. I don't know if I should be doing that now. I'll try not doing that. Let's see what happens. Oops. No, one second. This, and then let's see what happens. Again, anytime I run this, things could crash. Like, like, the stream could just die. We'll, we'll see. Um, size must be a 1D tensor of two elements. New height, new width. Okay. So, so maybe it, it, it figures out the 10,000 and it figures out the three automatically. Maybe that's just a thing. Uh, if this doesn't work, then I'll actually go and print out the shape after it uh, does this. Okay. It is doing things. Computer's fans are going. Not again. size if this is going to be this big I can't even stop it Please. Uh. We're good. Maybe? No, we're not good. Mm. Ah. Okay, it just died for a little bit. I was able to control C and stop it. Okay, uh, at least I think I did. Ah. Uh. Good. Not yet. <laughs> I'm still trying to stop this. Ah. I could kill the terminal. That might, act, might happen faster. Good. Oh my god. <laughs> ah. Okay, we are free. Uh, uh, are we good yet? Well, look how Unity's doing Unity things. I don't need this open, I just have it open to show new people that come in and be like, here's my usual stuff. I don't even know if you all can hear me yet. Mm-hmm. Why do you- wait, you closed. Why are you- well, no, I think maybe you haven't completely closed yet. Uh -huh. Are we good? Are we good? I think we're good. Okay. Well, that didn't work. Uh, hmm. So it is the AlexNet that's the problem, which is concerning, to say the least. So I'm gonna try something. Mm. If I, I don't know, I run it with a really tiny batch size, but like even smaller. I don't know, maybe it, maybe it'll be more fine. I don't know. Um, why are you? Why is this having a problem now? Not out of the woods yet. Ah, uh, mouse, let me have. Well, we'll have to wait a bit. Wait this out. My computer has a meltdown. Mm. Okay. Things didn't completely crash this time. So, I mean, looking objectively, that is technically an improvement. <laughs> Um, 
And I need a better way to be able to force, like, stop it, because that was just not letting me do it. It even, like, freezes my mouse, like, for a while there. Um, and even then, it's still, like, I don't even know what, what things are doing. I'm going to close the other Visual Studios, and I will close Unity for now. Uh, at least, you know, help out a little bit. Come on. I, 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 yeah, something still just... Yeah. Yeah, something's just taking its sweet all time. Okay, we good? Still have... I mean, let's close some of these tabs that I don't think I need open currently. Ah. Uh, close basically everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. We good? Alright, let's... Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is, this is looking like it might be a bit of a problem. But I don't think it should be. Or not as much as it is. Like, I think it's some code that's going wrong that's maybe doing this. Uh, I don't even know if I, like, I am properly passing in the data. I might not be. So let me... This, you, you didn't open the right thing. Um, let me do some things. Some, some things. Because it could be possible, here's a here's a theory, a wild theory, is that it might be, um, so it's supposed to run the network where it's like each image it passes in is 224 by 224 by 3. But if something's going wrong with how I'm pre-processing the data, it might be trying to put in an image of size 10,000. And then of course that's going to have lots of problems. So th that, that's a theory of something that could be going wrong, because I don't know that I'm even passing the data properly into the AlexNet. There's a good chance that I'm not. Um, I went open folder, not open files. Uh, or, yeah. But on top of that, I'm also going to, yeah, I closed Unity, I closed the other VS Code. You know, it might help a little bit um, in terms of CPU and all that. Uh, because Unity is also pretty hefty. <laughs> um, okay, so let me do things. Keep this as it was. Uh, I don't need that. Um, that wasn't even a thing. Um, I said, so wait, it was larger this number. What, what makes this the absolute smallest? be one and then also I'm the epochs on like five so batch size of one means that it will run wait no i want this high or no i want this to be really high that was it yeah yeah uh could go full ten thousand, so it's gonna run on a single image this would make it super fast in theory um yeah same thing here just so that like if it does run and i can't stop it it'll maybe finish faster and all that. Uh, so we got all this commented out code. We're going to leave it all down there for now. So what I'm going to do is basically get out, like, not not have those, li those two lines there. Because I, I believe that it's got to be, like, th this is the point where th the input data gets involved, right? So, um, I also don't even know if uh, like if this is this is right. Like this could also be the problem. Like this compile thing. Like maybe this is not how this is supposed to be. Like these are supposed to be using different different things, which as I said, I don't know. But um, let me then run the test of. Let's see if this like I as I said, I don't know that this resizes to what it's supposed to. So let me start there. Of. Uh, printing this dot shape and if i run this it shouldn't crash again because it i'm not running the neural network this time so it shouldn't even be allocating the data for doing that maybe i guess we'll find out though uh-oh uh-oh brace yourselves it's fine so far Nope. Or not. It's the compile part, isn't it? 
Oh, 